Wait, so if this thing is called Gundam Seltzam, so literally translating, this thing is called Gundam Strange. Hmm, I wonder what's missing. There we go. That looks better. Hello everybody, MJ2005 Gundam here, and today I'm going to be reviewing the High Grade Gundam Seltzam from Gundam Build Divers Re-Rise. So, this thing being based off of the Mark III, I have to say it is an interesting modification. And well, the purple color scheme looks pretty decent for an edgy suit, I must say. And well, to be honest, the silhouette of this guy just looks pretty damn edgy, but that's just about it. This guy is for the silhouette only. Now, as you can see, the polycasts are not working well because the polycasts in the arms are not from this kit. I swapped out plenty of polycaps because the polycaps that come with this kit do not hold in the arms well. Whenever I try to twist the arms, they always just pop off. However, when I swap in other polycaps of the same type, this happens. Probably this is the fourth or fifth polycap that I swapped out, and every single time, it does this. So only the polycaps from this kit seem to work apparently, other than holding in the arms because the ball and socket doesn't work on the quality caps that came with this kit. Maybe I'm tired, I don't know, but anyways, the poly caps on this thing don't seem to be working. However, I know it's just the luck of the draw, so it may be only on my kit. Tell me if you guys have any different experiences with your own Gundam Zeltzap. So the looks of this thing do look pretty good. However, I do have a complaint obviously with the arm because the arms do not have the wine colored pipes which I can forgive because it is kind of made on two halves. The seam lines don't seem to be pretty apparent again because it is deep within the gap of the pipes so you cannot really see the seam lines on the actual orange arm but yeah if you look at it from close up it's still kind of hard to make out so good job on Bandai for hiding these seam lines because these are just made of two pieces sandwiched into a joint but then the missing color wraps we have the uh, joints on the fingers. They are supposed to be gray because these fingers are stationary. And then the head over here, the mask, it is the right scale. However, it just posts out way too much. Let me wrap up the head and show you what I mean. Look at this. So I took out the mask and look at this. It just looks like an evil villain. Now you can actually see the proper eyes. So the mask over here, actually protrudes out way too much in my opinion because the curve needs to actually be flush with the Gundam mask over here. So for modifications you really need to try and trim away all of this excess space over here and kind of trim the peg as well just so the mask can fit flush onto the Gundam face. It just looks way too chunky when it is out too far. So I would recommend doing that modification. I'm probably going to be doing that later on, but not now, just so I could give you guys an out-of-box build. But other than those complaints, this kit does look very, very good. The chest, I have to say, looks pretty menacing, and all of the wine red color details are all made out of plastic. And yeah, this thing does not have many missing color wraps apart from the wine pipes over here because all the stickers are used for the head. So you have the five eyes, so the one for the twin eyes, the actual twin eyes, one for the eye on the V-fin, and two for the eyes on the mask. And of course, we do have one for the pink sensor over here. Colors aren't really a problem except for the strange arm. Articulation. This thing is using the Gundam Mark III joints, which yeah, basically confirms a Hyrule Universal Century Mark III. So you guys can get a preview of what that is gonna be like. So first of all, the head, double ball joint, poly cap, so nothing really too special. The arms, they are on the swing out, as you see multiple times here, it's kind of floppy because these are replaced poly caps. You can rotate over here for the normal arm, the arm can go out that far. The shoulder armor can move up slightly, so altogether, you really aren't going to get anything more than a perpendicular outwards motion. Rotation at the forearm. And a single joint to the forearm, so the Mark III is going to come with a single joint only. But it does also have a rotation right above the elbow. But you really cannot get it to work if you do not bend the arm, because the bend of the arm kind of locks in the, the rotation of the forearm. 
And of course, you do have a ball joint to rest over here, which is kind of tight, which is nice. And then for the strange arm over here, rotation as expected. And then the shoulder armor over here move. The arm can move out that far. And altogether with the ball joint over here, you're not really going to get anything close to perpendicular to the body. Rotation at the top. And then there's a double hinge that you can extend the strange arm out. Rotation at the wrist. And a wrist joint over here, which is pretty decent. And then you have the two moving thumbs connected on the bar together. So you could cut it if you so choose, so that you have individual thumbs, but that's about all the modifications you can do straight out of the box, because you will need some serious, serious modifications if you want to get a fully articulate hand, which the Goof Revive and the Gundam The End can actually do. Waist is on a simple ball, double ball joint mechanism, so you can rotate side to side. It kind of does pop off easily on mine. I don't know if it's the polycaps work or not, but let me know in the comments below if you do get your own kit. And there's no crunches whatsoever, so never bother about that. Front screws can move, side screws can barely move out of the way because the wine pieces are going to hit the torso. And then of course the back skirt, the gigantic trapezium butt flap, cannot move as per freaking usual. And then the legs, they can move up and down separate from the waist the legs can go forwards not that far but uh yeah polycap issues but if you bend the knee then bend it forward you're gonna get quite a good bend towards the back nothing because yeah with all this bulky armor and the bulky butt flap you're not gonna get anywhere backwards outwards almost all the way rotation at the thigh a double jointed knee, this thing can theoretically bend 180 degrees and of course the polycast starts to give way now. Why? Double jointed knee, however, due to the bulk of the armor, you aren't really going to get much out of it. But if you remove all the armor, then it can bend more. However, this is kind of like the Gundam Iscalapius from back in the day. So you're not going to get an actual Mark III leg underneath all of this armor because if you flip this up, it's just, yeah, two pieces of armor right here. So you're not going to get a full leg, so all you can get out of this kit is just a 90 degree bend. And as you can see, these cannons can flip up, and the thrusters over here can move, and of course the back panel of the Mark III leg can move. That's pretty nice. And then the ankle guard can kind of flap up if you flap the cannon up already. And then the feet can go forwards and back, side to side, and rotate. That's about it. So that's all the articulation on the Gundam Zeltsam. Nothing really too special, nothing really too magnificent. It's just decent articulation, but the lower body is hindered by the armor, but the upper body, I can't really do anything about it. It's kind of par, if I may say so myself. No pun intended, by the way. Accessories. So the all the accessories that this thing comes with, including the strange arm, will be included in the Zeltsam arm set. So treat this as a review for that. First of all, we have the Hyper Death Lance, which is a gigantic lance looking thing. Yeah, it's kind of like a double lance because you could use it as a lance with the hilt and at the actual lance tip. Looks pretty strange in my opinion. Yeah, this thing is called Zeltsam, so of course it's strange. It also has an extended handle, which you can hear a very, very loud click, so be careful. Looking pretty nice. And if you want the strange arm to hold it, you do have a peg in the palm. So basically you rotate the thumbs out of the way and then connect the lance into the peg with one of these two holes. So you just connect that, readjust the thumbs and here you go. The strange arm is holding the hyper death lance. Which is basically kind of the case of the gray sign. You actually hold it by actually having your palm out. So this just looks bad. But due to the extending mechanic, you do have a way smaller handle. This allows the normal hand to actually hold the hyper death lance. So crack open the hand, slide it in, and try your best to actually put the hand cover back on. There we go. It's kind of floppy in the hand because yeah, it is a small handle and circular, mind you. So, yeah, 
it doesn't really hold well in the normal arm but you can kind of get like an iron blooded orphan's pose if you like it and then if you want to store the hyper death lance you have this this connector right here so you can plug this connector into one side of the backpack and yes the hyper death lance is so heavy that it pried open the hand and fell out of its own. What a treat. So you could basically store the hyperdesk lance. So one of these four holes on the lance head over here could plug into this peg over here. So there we go. And you can adjust it by a swivel over here. That's it. Last but not least, we have the shield binder slash hyper death launcher. So this thing comes in this fluorescent orange in this Zeltzam kit, while it comes in the blue in its Zeltzam arm set. Which looks pretty nice, in my opinion. And basically just goes on to the second hole on the backpack right here. So one funny thing is, you can see holes in the gun side over here. So theoretically, you'll be able to plug the shield on both sides. However, the shield is made for the one side only. So these holes are totally obsolete. Well, there is some information for you. But either way, you can just plug it in. So this thing does have quite a bit of range of articulation. So let me remove the desk lines and show you what I mean. So first of all, you have a swivel at the base. It's not really that much because the art over here hits the backpack. And then you have a swivel here, a swivel here, and a rotation here. So the arm has quite a bit of articulation, so you can actually maneuver it. And also the swivel at the base, never forget that. You can maneuver it, and then you flip the barrel out, which is very, very nice. Flip up the guard, and there's a tab over here, so you can flip up the handle and allow the Zeltzam to hold it. Now, very, very nice. So that's about it for the Zeltzam. However, this thing does come with the adapter that is gonna come with the Zeltzam arms as well. So what this allows you to do is to plug in the Zeltzam weapons into the back over here. So here I have the Transient Glacier as an example. So you could give any kit that has a double peg system the Zeltzam weapons if I could plug it in like so. So pretty nice gimmick. However, if you would not want this plain gray plank, you could obviously rip off the Zeltzam backpack. If you like the gas mask looking thruster configuration and the purple backpack because this thing is using the double pegs. So, of course, you can rip off the Zeltzam's actual backpack and give it to any kit that you want. In terms of leftover pieces, you first of all do get a thumbs up holding hand, which is left over from the Gundam Mark III plate, which has a peg over here. Don't know why. I'm not really familiar with the Gundam Mark III, but if there's any accessory that comes into mind that actually uses this hand, please tell me in the comments below. Apart from that, you do have leftover pieces for the Gunner Mark III. You have the jewel on the head, you have an extra arm cuff, and an extra back piece, and I forgot where this goes. But all to, due to the fact that this guy only has one head, one waist, and one arm. One normal arm. So, these are leftover. And then next up, we have the ammo clip over here which is probably meant for the Mark III rifle. So all the leftover pieces of the Gundam Zeltzam is actually part of the Gundam Mark III. For comparisons, obviously Mars IV Gundam because the Earth III cannot stand a chance against this guy. Neither did the Mars IV but the Mars IV actually retaliated for a bit. And then why not the Gundam Justice Knight. So it's good versus evil here. But then the Mobile Dalmay is not going to come to us until January 2020. So 
we'll have to settle with this for now. So that's it for the review of the Gundam Zeltan. What do I think of this kit? Well, actually, I like it more than I anticipated it to be. Because I thought the arm is going to be literally the thing that actually drags down my opinions of the Gundam Zeltan. Obviously, it did, but not as much. I really like the folding desk launcher and also the actual cannons that are integrated into the legs and of course the edgy look. However, as I did say, I am disappointed with the arm because it doesn't have fully articulate fingers. But the rest of the kit, obviously I did mention the mask is way too chunky, but do some modifications and put it flush against the head. And that's about it for the Seltzer modifications. The rest of the kit is actually pretty decent. I like the look of the chest, however, it is body cat compatibility. Oh man, I don't know if it is my luck or something like that, but hell, body cat compatibility is abysmal. So do some testing yourself and correct me in the comments because four poly caps still drooping arms i don't know but anyways i will actually salvage some of the parts of the seltzer because they look so nice into possibly a custom plan when that pops into mind but the head chest and legs are definitely salvageable from this build but anyways with all of that said i'm gonna give this guy a six out of ten It's above average actually just right above average I would recommend this kit if you do like the looks of it. It is actually pretty decent. It's like a very, very decent kit. I would not discourage you from buying it. But anyways, 6 out of 10. A buy if you want it, don't get it if you don't. It's kind of situation, so it's up to you. So that's it for me. Thank you all so much for watching this video. If you did like it, please be sure to drop a like, comment, and also subscribe for more Gunpla reviews, Gunpla news, and all that kind of stuff. Subscribe to the feature channels on my channel page if you haven't, and I'll see you all in the next video. Peace out guys. Bye bye.